Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm back with uh, one of the prophecy no, uh, letters from Dawn. I've been saving <laughs> a couple of them here. T today is Tuesday, June the 1st. It's 4.59 p.m. This one was sent to me on May the 29th of 21. Right, it's 6.24 a.m. I get them early because they probably put them out late. They come here early. Okay, the first one is good. It's Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. Now listen to this. If you're part of the first fruits, you're going to get it immediately. If you don't know, you... One thing that I have heard is that you may be one of the first fruits and don't really know it yet. You know you're living right. You know you're repenting when you mess up, because we all do. Lose our temper, overeat, uh, maybe say a bad word, whatever. We, we all do stuff we shouldn't. And you know you're repenting, you know you're in your word, you know you're uh, living the way you're supposed to. You search your heart for anything unclean. You do all that, but you haven't really heard from the Lord that you're a first fruit. And I have heard it said that some people will be going, and it's going to be a complete surprise to them. Now listen to this. If you will release yourself completely to me I will transport you above and beyond physical restraint to find incredible spiritual freedom I will propel you beyond natural boundaries and limitations to experience a supernatural existence. Let go and let me move you. Now, what does that say to you? There's something holding you back from completely giving yourself over to the Lord you're doing all this other stuff right you're repenting you're walking the straight and narrow you're doing good deeds when you see someone in need you give or go buy them a meal or you see a needy family maybe you you give them I don't know whatever you go find a way what do they need you try to help them all right, but something is, maybe it's a lack of faith that there's two raptures. The one is the bride of Christ, the first fruits. All right, uh, and oh, it is just so exciting. I have videos on that. I've redone that message so many times. And the first uh, verse I got led to was Revelation 14.4. Let me pull it up. Uh, yeah, I don't need that anymore. Let me go to Revelation 14.4. caps are still on I do that a lot I end up typing something all in caps it's easier to read but I really don't mean to do it all right these are they this is Revelation 14 4 we're talking about the hundred and forty four thousand now what kind of coincidence is it that when you're discussing the hundred and forty four thousand the verse happens to be one of them, happens to be Revelation 
one four colon four one four four just saying it says these are they which were not defiled with women and that does not mean men who were not defiled with human women women represents the churches let me see what the tools say but it is the churches it's always the church is always referred to as a woman um, all right 1133 is the G 1133 Gune all right women wife a woman of any age whether a virgin or married or a widow a wife of a betrothed woman universally a woman of any age a widow Okay, it's not saying it, but it means the church is referred to as the harlot that rides the beast. That's the Roman Catholic Church. So if the, a huge church like that can be referred to as a harlot, which is a woman then the question is why could this not represent a woman a church the churches have defiled God's people by lying to them they've taught them rituals they didn't need to know rituals that were became sins for them to do things like not needing to repent no need to, you don't have to do good deeds the Lord loves it but you don't have to so so many people have that in their mind I don't have to when I can I will but I don't have to you know oh dear well, they can just leave a message. Anyway. Let me try to shut it up. That's the hospital. Not the hospital, my doctor's office building. I don't know what in the world they want. They keep bugging me to go get another annual test that women have. It hurts too much. I don't want to go. I don't want to go anymore because of other reasons. I don't want to be around all those vaccinated people. I'm around enough of them here. And they don't even touch me. All right. Sorry. That was a little too much information. Uh, I'll call them back. Why are they calling me after 5 o'clock? All right. All right. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Jesus was called the first fruits of the dead. He was the first to rise from the dead. We are the first fruits to be raptured. Our bodies go without us dying. We weren't, we came out of the churches 
and look straight to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit to teach us the word, not a pastor. Not that there's anything wrong with going as long as it's not just a social club. In fact, Jesus has told some people, come out of her, my people. Many of the churches are they're telling people it's all right to go get the jab and the preachers are taking it. So they're saying it's okay. Do you get my point? They, we've come out of the churches. If you found one, there might be a few out there sprinkled about here and there where they preach the word right. They don't lie to you. And they don't give you false or wrong information. Okay, I'm going to leave it go at that. Um... Okay, I'm going to close that, and anyway, I guess I got off on that because of the, I was trying to help you understand, you may not know your first fruit, but you might be. The verse put with this, 2 Corinthians 3.18, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. It does not say what version that is. Alright. This is another one. Um, Alright. I, I'm going to go ahead and share it. I think that it will help some people. Dated May 29th. I know the seriousness of what is happening in your life. You don't have to say, but it is good for you to recount. In other words, talk to somebody. Now listen, I know you do not like to talk about it, so just tell me. Others are not going to know the depth of your feelings anyway. You will discover that when you do tell, I am the one who truly understands and I am the one who can do something about it. So that is very good, a very good word for people who have gone through stuff. We'll just call it stuff. And you really should talk to someone about it. And Jesus is saying, I believe, this is from the Lord, that you need to talk to me. He's saying, I understand. He knows all the details already. But we have to talk to the Lord. He wants us to take our problems to him. I painted on a shirt, my mind is just fine, my, I had the best psychiatrist in the world, his name is Jesus, it's a little wordy, so if I don't, I'm not just sitting there, you know, like where someone can read it, <laughs> they don't see it all maybe, but I remember wearing it to my doctor's office. I said, see, look at the shirt I made. My mind is just fine. And she said, yeah, but it's winter. Aren't you cold in that t-shirt? And I said, no. I said, but I have a coat if I need it. You know, I guess she thought I should have wore something warmer. 
but I, I didn't need to. Anyway, let's move on. The verse given is Psalm 56, 8 from the New King James Version. You number my wanderings, put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book when I cry out to you? Then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. In God, I will praise his word. That's in parentheses. In the Lord, I will praise his word. And that's in parentheses. I didn't know the New King James Version did that. I knew the Message Bible did. But anyway, I will praise his word. We can praise his word. We can praise him. We can praise him for everything. And that was uh, given to Bev Robinson. All right. This one, I think I understand it. It can only be one way. I will read it and tell you what I believe is the interpretation of it. And you can pray about it or just forget about it. Whatever you think is best for you. Because you know what? If these are really words from the Lord, how different is that from the words in the Bible? If Jesus is really speaking to us through these words, and I believe most of the time he is, some I question, just like those prophecies on 444prophecy.com, some of them are clearly not from him. Anyway, the imminent great awakening to stimulate my church is cresting the horizon. It means it's about to be here. Utter amazement, awe, and wonder will be in the minds of those who are lost and those who know me as their Savior. I am coming upon you and your land like a rushing wind as I did in the upper room. Fast flowing floods of my presence will astonish everyone. The power pack times will usher many to my kingdom. Watch and pray. The only way this can be from the Lord and be right is if it means that the great awakening to stimulate the church is the taking of the bride but that brings in a lot of horror, destruction. It's supposed to be World War III, they say. War, famine, pestilence, economy crashing. But we come back. The Bride of Christ comes back as the Harvest Army and will set to having the biggest, uh, what do you call it, revival ever. So that would make the rest of it absolutely true. Utter amazement as we bring people back from the dead, put limbs back on people, feed a huge group with just a little bit of food. You get my point? Would that not be utter amazement, awe, and wonder? will be in the minds of those who are lost and those who know me as their Savior. Both. He's saying, 
I am coming upon you and your land like a rushing wind as I did in the upper room. And that's how it'll be. While everything else is going on, we're going to be saving people. Like physically and as Jesus did, he helped them physically first. And then and preached as well and got them to accept him as their savior although many turned or when he said eat my body and drink my blood when he was talking about communion and doing it as a remembrance of him they thought he meant literally got grossed out and left well then when the Pharisees, when they tried him, the Pharisees got them all to say, crucify him, crucify him. So they turned on him. A lot of them did. So I hope, I mean, that's what we're seeing now. I'm, if you get my drift, people not trusting in him instead trusting medicine and the government you get my drift and I'm praying that after we go outside of time we're brought back in the past and can undo what got done that is what I hope because I don't believe it cannot be done Jesus can do everything all right, he says, I'm coming upon you and your land like a rushing wind as I did in the upper room. Fast flowing floods of my presence will astonish everyone. And it will. A lot of people. The power pack times will usher many to my kingdom. Watch and pray. Now this has to mean if 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 we're not put back in the past many who who are already doomed will not be able to come to him but if we are put back in the past do you not see how many more will come when they see the miracles that happen? I don't know at all how it's going to happen. I've just seen enough from people that Seem to even though they have some weirdness about them, they seem to be hearing from the Lord at least at times, and maybe the rest of the times is from their flesh. I don't know. I don't want to say. I don't want to be guilty of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. All right. So the power pack times will usher many to my kingdom. Watch and pray. The verse given is Jeremiah 24, 7 from the Voice Bible. I will give them a new intense desire to know me because I am the eternal one. They will be my people and I will be their God because they will return to me completely. And that was uh, given to Kevin Robinson. All right, here's the last one. As my child, you have been elevated to a new level of wisdom for all that you do. Clearly, that does not speak to everyone. There's so many people that need more wisdom, right? Or they wouldn't have done what they've already done. All right, so he's talking to those who have. 
perhaps to Jonas Bolin, who received this. He goes on to say, My wisdom is available for you and has been available to you from the foundation of time. My desire is that you pursue my wisdom, not the wisdom of the world. Yeah, look where that's gotten a lot of people. Your desire for wisdom will be met with opposition from the world's understanding of wisdom. Boy, howdy, that's the truth. When you ask for, seek and pursue my wisdom, you will have it. Here's the verse put with this. Verses, Proverbs 3, 13 through 18 in the NASB. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her profit is better than the profit of silver and her gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels. Now, pause. It's referring to the word wisdom, which in the Strong's Concordance is a feminine word. Feminine. However they determine that, I don't know. Maybe it's because women are wiser than men. I don't know. Okay, don't get your feelings hurt, fellas. They gave it a uh, gender of feminine. I don't know why. All right. So it says, She, wisdom, is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. Nothing you desire compares with wisdom. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant, so if you have wisdom, your ways are pleasant, and all her paths are peace. When you are wise, you will say things to keep the peace, if at all possible. That's what it's saying. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. So wisdom is a tree of life to those who will take hold of it. Should be it. Wisdom isn't it to me. But anyway, if you take hold of wisdom, and happy are all who hold her fast. So always be, that's the end of it. It was given to Jonas Bowen. So seek wisdom. I often pray, Lord, give me more wisdom. I need more wisdom. I need more discernment. I ask for it more and more and have been ever since I heard from a, a lying spirit way back in like 2015. Some, it was about my sister and her kids going to Mexico and it lied to me and said, tell your sister not to let them go because if they go, uh, uh, ISIS will hurt them, kill them. That's how it was put, that sentence. I don't remember the, how the rest of it went. But anyway, the gist of it was that we. I knew ISIS was down there in some city in Mexico. Well, they were going to Encino. It turns out it was a tourist. It's a big tourist town right over the border. I'm sure it was part for fun, part they went and gave things to the poor. I don't know what all. 
She just asked my niece who got to go. The other one didn't get to go because she was sick. It was mononucleosis, of all things. And she said, oh, yeah, we went. We didn't have any troubles. We had a great time. That's basically all she said. I was hoping to hear about the the missionary part of it. But she was 15, you know. Okay. Anyway, it was a lie. They didn't get hurt or killed, obviously. All right. Um, so that's all there is to say about that. Um, I know I was wordy with that one, but I felt like things needed to be added. Or if you just took it at face value, just like with part of the words of the Bible, when you just read certain paragraphs, they're, they're not easy to understand. And they seem to be contradictory to something else you learned in the Word. Which is why I went into such explanation on them. I'm sorry for the phone call interruption. So now I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over each and every one of us and our devices and our internet connections as well. Okay, so with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.